Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you all see if I write on this blackboard here? Okay, okay. So, uh, so our setting is uh, the classical one. We are in R2N with the standard symplectic form, DPJ, DQJ. So I use the physical notation P and Q. And uh, so my talk today is about, uh, yeah, uh, an old and somehow fundamental question. So how um, how mo how rigid are symplectic diffeomorphism in comparison to uh, volume preserving ones? What are the things which a uh, volume preserving diffeomorphism can do, and is that a uh, symplectic one cannot? And uh, and of course, elementary things. Uh, yeah, for instance, if one has a, a fixed point, which happens to be a hyperbolic. Then, of course, uh, in the symplectic world, the stable and unstable manifolds have to have the same dimension. In, uh, in, uh, for volume preserving, they have just to be both positive dimensional, and that's it. But instead, uh, to find more, say, refined things, the, uh, the most uh, well-known uh, result is uh, the non-squeezing theorem of Gromov. Let me recall the statement, non-squeezing. Gromov. So no symplectic diffeo maps. Uh, the ball of radius r into a cylinder, say, q1, qn, with q1 squared plus q1 squared less than s squared, if uh, r is bigger than s. OK. And uh, uh, so this is a sort of. Uh, two-dimensional rigidity phenomenon. This, the base of this cylinder has, has dimension two. And uh, it has been a long question whether there are also sort of middle-dimensional um, rigidity phenomena, because after all, uh, symplectic diff preserves omega, so it preserves all, all its uh, uh, powers. So it seemed to be reasonable that there should be also middle-dimensional phenomena. And the, the prototype of this was, uh, so people looked at the, the question of what happens about uh, considering embeddings of polydisks. So if I have a, a polydisk, so B1, BRN, so these are two-dimensional balls. This is in, in, this, in the plane, I don't know, P1, Q1, P2, Q2, et cetera. And they ask whether this embeds into BR1 prime cross BRN prime. Then, by means of a symplectic embedding, then there are uh, obvious, so there's an obvious uh, obstruction which is given by volume, so R1 prime R2 prime product Rn prime has to be greater or equal than R1 Rn. And, and then instead, uh, <laughs> Gromov's no squeezing theorem tells us that the minimal radius Ra prime uh, has to be bigger than the minimum of Ri. And of course, the question was whether uh, also other products of this ready play play a role. And uh, some years ago, in 2008, uh, Guth actually ruled this out. So there's a construction by, by Larry Guth, which shows that uh, um, so there is a constant 
depending on the dimension n, such that if I have, uh, so if, uh, uh, let's put it here. R1 prime, Rn prime is bigger than this constant R1, Rn. And also the minimum of Ri prime is bigger than this constant, the minimum of the Ri's. So if we have these inequalities, say, but just up to a, uh, up to a constant, then there exists a symplectic diffio phi, which does this thing here. OK. And uh, so when I first heard about this result, so this was uh, like four years uh, ago in, uh, in, in Oberwolfach. Uh, Helmut Hofer gave a, a talk, an evening talk, about this, this construction. And the title was somehow, uh, it was, uh, uh, the title was uh, Life After Goose. So in some sense, the, the thing was that uh, such a result uh, could imply that there are actually no more, uh, say, no middle dimensional phenomena to be found out in symplectic um, topology. And so in some sense, uh, at least if we think about these basic questions, uh, uh, we all know, we all already know what is, what one should, uh, uh, what sh one should know. And uh, yeah, I was also uh, very impressed about this because I also, so like probably anybody else believed that, uh, this was not possible. And, uh, and so I started thinking about sort of a, a different way of uh, uh, thinking about such a phenomenon. And so the aim was to try to understand why one can do these things in symplectic topology. And, but in order to do this, polydisks are a bit too complicated. And so I would like to uh, stick with the ball as domain of, uh, of my um, Simplex diffio, and to start by so we start by rephrasing the gram of no squeezing in a in an equivalent way like this. If we have uh, phi from the ball into our to n symplectic diffio, then we can say that the and so let's call p. e This is the projector onto uh, <coughs> the P1, Q2, Q1, Q1 plane. OK, orthogonal projector. And then one can uh, reformulate Gromov theorem by saying that the area of the projection of the image of the ball of radius r is greater or equal than pi r squared. Okay, this is uh, so. Uh, apparently, this is a this is a stronger statement. <coughs> because of course, the the area of the projection could be small without being contained in a in a disk, but it's actually uh, equivalent because you can always you look at this uh, uh, projected set, and if it has, if, if this does not hold, if, the, uh, if you have the other strict inequality, then you can always, by means of an area preserving map, map into a disk of, uh, of small radius, and you get, uh, uh, you violate uh, Gromov, Gromov statement. So this is, this is Gromov. Okay. But if you write it in this way, there is an obvious uh, uh, generalization, say tentative generalization. Instead of projecting onto this P1, Q1 plane, one projects projection onto P2, 
q1, pk, qk space. Again, orthogonal projection. And one asks whether it's true that the 2k dimensional volume of p phi dr, so let's put a question mark, is bigger than the corresponding, the 2k k dimensional volume of the corresponding ball of radius 2k. Okay, this is the question. So in some sense, the question is whether, yeah, the, the 2K, so <coughs> Gromov's statement says that the, the two-dimensional shadow of the image of this ball has big area, and now we ask whether the uh, 2K dimensional shadow of the image of the ball has big, big volume. And a uh, couple of observations. So, well, so this is true for k equal 1 by Gromov, and it's trivially true for k equal n because it's volume preserving, so we have inequality. So in, in some sense, it's an interpolation between Gromov and Uville. And another observation is that to, if you want to formulate this way with the volume, you need to use also the Euclidean structure of uh, R2n. But of course, if you want to avoid it, you could uh, Take, if you want to use only the, um, the symplectic structure, you can take uh, any symplectic vector space, subspace. You project, you consider the symplectic projection, which means that you project along the symplectic orthogonal, and then you replace this volume by the, integration, the integral of omega to the k divided by k factorial. Okay? So I, I will use also the Euclidean structure because we have it, but let's but it's a, it's a symplectic statement. Okay, so I want to discuss a bit this, uh, this statement. And a first result, oh, I should also cite my co-author. These results are joint work with Slava Matveyev from Leipzig. Okay, so the first result Let's call it uh, linear non-squeezing. Says that this is indeed true when the symplectic uh, diffeomorphism is linear. So if phi is a linear symplectic uh, isomorphism, so automorphism of a of R2n, then uh, the inequality holds volume 2k of pi phi. Well, here, of course, we can consider just a unit ball. When I just write b, I, I mean the unit ball. And this is greater or equal than omega 2k. And I just need another thing. Uh, the equality actually holds if and only if I take the image of R, R2k, R2k is the space spanned by the first uh, so P1, uh, P2, Q2k, by the first coordinates. If I take the image by the adjoint of T, if this is a complex subspace with respect to the standard uh, complex structure that we have, then we have uh, equality. And here, of course, this is linear algebra, it's, uh, it's easy, but let me just say what, is, uh, what are the ingredients because we will use them uh, later. So the ingredient is basically that when one has a, a map say, from Rn to Rh, a linear map, linear, and on two, then if I want to compute the the volume, the h-dimensional volume of uh, A of the ball, say divided by omega h, uh, then this is, one has formulas like, this is for instance the determinant of uh, A, A transposed uh, one half, 
or also, so this is an automorphism here in our H, or also the maximum overall sub V in the Grassmannian of also subspaces of dimension H in Rn, so V in the Grassmannian of dimension H in Rn of the determinant of A restricted to V, which makes sense because now V and Rh have the same dimension, so they are, here we always have um, this Euclidean structure, so the absolute value of the determinant is, is well defined. Okay, so this is the <coughs> ingredient one uses, and then the other thing one uses is what is called Wirtinger inequality, the fact that omega to the k, the, the mass of omega to the k is realized on complex uh, planes and something like that. Okay, so this is the linear thing. Then, a second result is, uh, say, let's call it, let's permute the words, nonlinear squeezing. So in the smooth, uh, in the in the symplectic uh, for nonlinear symplectic map, this is uh, this is false. So if one strictly less than k and strictly less than n, and then epsilon for every positive epsilon, there exist phi symplectic such that the two k dimensional volume of phi of the unit ball it's less than epsilon okay so when we are in an intermediate dimension then this uh, this image of a ball can have this uh, shadow with uh, arbitrary small small uh, volume and the construction of this counterexample uh, so this is an example and the construction uses exactly some of the construction uh, that Guth introduced in this, uh, in this paper. One has to just to arrange them in a, in a different way. And, uh, and of course, so this map is, is extremely nonlinear because for instance, so the, Im the image is something which has uh, all its uh, two dimensional shadows, even on symplectic planes, have big area. Nevertheless, this uh, I don't know four-dimensional shadow has small small volume. So the map is really is really nonlinear. And so a natural question is, uh, where is the? So if, if you have a statement which is true in the linear category and it's not true in the nonlinear category, what is the borderline? Is it because this map is really nonlinear, or it's already enough to have uh, I don't know small perturbation of a linear map to uh, exhibit this, uh, this phenomenon. And, and uh, formulating this question in terms of the, when the initial domain is the ball, it, I think it's, it's, it has the advantage that one can make this uh, local question very, very precise. And uh, so one way of uh, putting this local question precisely is, for instance, I can fix I fix phi a symplectic diffeo. And I fix also a point, for instance, the origin. And I ask, is it true? I fix also P, the projector. P is always orthogonal projector onto a 2K dimensional plane. And I ask whether the 2K dimensional volume of P of phi of a ball of radius r is bigger than omega 2k r 2k for every r small. Okay, this is one way of formulating the logical question. Another way is uh, I can consider uh, a path phi t, t in 0, 1 of symplectic diffeos, say a smooth path. say that at zero, phi zero, let's call it big phi, is linear. And then the question is whether 
the volume, again, the two k dimensional volume of P phi T. So in this time I can work with the unit, unit ball, fix the ball. And the question is whether this is greater or equal than omega to the 2k r. Uh, sorry, just this, because it's the unit ball for small t. So I, I perturb a bit a linear mapping, and I would like to see if, uh, at least at the beginning, I, I have the inequality. Okay, so, and of course, a positive answer to this uh, question would imply a positive answer to this other one just by rescaling uh, uh, near, the, near the point. Okay, and here, so, uh, I'm absolutely convinced that both these results are, are true. And we have two results now which give, I think, pretty strong evidence that these are true, although they are not still a, a proof of, uh, of these. So let me start with the, so the, the first one, let's call it a, a proposition. And let's call it a, just a generic, generic local non-squeezing. Squeezing. This is in the first formulation, the one when I fix the, the map. And uh, so I fix the map and I can say that there exists a set. So I fix my, my, my symplectic diffuse A is, is from R to N to itself. Then there exists a set U in R to N, which is open and dense, such that for every X in U, so if I put the center of my ball in U, then the local squeezing, non-squeezing holds. The volume, so there exists a R0, which depends on X, positive such that the 2k dimensional volume of p of the ball of radius of phi of the ball of radius r center x <coughs> is greater or equal than omega 2k r 2k for every r smaller than r0. Okay, so at every, at almost, so in an, on an open dense set, this is true. And yeah, I don't want to call this a theorem because uh, I mean, as I said, I think that U should be actually be the whole, the whole uh, R2N. And also because actually uh, the proof of this uh, at some point uses an argument from, um, from geometric measure theory, something about uh, uh, minimal submanifolds, which is a non-trivial thing. And uh, so it's, it's not really uh, satisfactory. One would like to have a, a decent proof, elementary proof of such statements. And maybe uh, I, let's say something about this argument uh, at the <coughs> end. Before I would let, uh, yes, sure. This statement is just like a stability statement, right? Yes, so it's a, uh, Exactly, in fact, this is exactly, now we want to differentiate in t equals zero and see what happens. Exactly, this is what we, we, we but I mean, differentiating, t, differentiating this function is, uh, this is what I will describe, but it uh, uh, took me, yeah, several months to compute the derivative. So, uh, so but before stating this other, uh, result, I need just some preliminaries. So what do I need? So when I have a, a curve, say from periodic, from peri period 2 pi with values in R to N, I will denote by, so E is just its uh, Dirichlet energy, one half integral zero to pi of Z prime squared. Is the Dirichlet energy, and by A, I will denote the symplectic area 
bounded by, by z. So this is the integral of z star lambda, where lambda is a primitive di yeah, dqi, a primitive of the symplectic form. <coughs> to n. <coughs> 2 pi z. So energy and area. The other uh, object that we need is uh, Uh, well, we said that R2K, the space spanned by the first coordinates, this, we have also a complex structure, can be identified with uh, CK. And uh, we will consider the, the Grassmannian of lines, the complex Grassmannian of complex line in this CK, which is nothing else than the complex projective space of dimension k minus 1. And on this uh, Grassmannian, we will consider the, uh, so let's call omega, it's a standard Keller form on this Grassmannian. And by me, I will denote the volume form which is induced by the standard Keller form. So it's, uh, I have to take omega to the k minus 1, exterior product by itself, and I will divide it by k minus 1 factorial. So this is the volume form on this Grassmannian. Okay? So this is our the objects I need in order to state the theorem. Uh, now the theorem is, so let's call it a second order expansion. Ah, uh, First thing, so we would like to, where should I write this? Maybe here. So we would like to, our question is whether now the 2k dimensional volume of the projection of phi t of the ball is greater or equal than omega 2k for t small, okay? And we know that phi zero is linear. So of course, if here at zero we already have a strict inequality, then uh, the result will be true by, by continuity. So we can assume now that uh, in, for the, the linear mapping is such that we have a, actually the equality, which means that we are assuming that phi t of r to k is complex. This is our assumption. And uh, you know, now in order to make, so we, we have a formula which works in general, but in order to make things easier in this presentation, I will just assume that phi is the identity. So we're just perturbing the identity, which is enough. So now we have this phi of t, so this is path symplectic diffuse, and phi of zero is the identity. And then, so the volume, the 2k dimensional volume of p of phi t of the ball, this is equal to omega 2k, and there is no zero order term, and there is a term, let's call it c, let's call it c, then let's see what it is, c plus t squared plus big O of t cube for t going to zero, and I have to tell you what, what this constant uh, c is. Uh, Another thing, so this path of symplectic diffuse 
is generated by a path of Hamiltonians. So we have dt, d dt of phi t. <coughs> this is some Hamiltonian vector field ht of phi t. Okay. So this will be every every path of symplectic differs here in R2n will be generated by such a thing. And so we have also these Hamiltonians. And uh, so this number C, so where C is this object <coughs> here. I, I, I write uh, the expression of, for C. Uh, C is the integral on the Grassmannian of complex line in CK of the energy of a path, let's call it ZL minus the area of the same path ZL. This integral is computed of this function with respect to the volume form mu in L. So L here is a, uh, in this notation, L is an element of the Grassmannian, it's a line. It's a complex line, okay? And these paths here, ZL, this is a loop, ZL of theta is, I take my Hamiltonian vector field H, X, H zero, I take its component, not the component on uh, CK, but the orthogonal component and evaluate it along a circle, so e to the uh, theta j, let's call it z l, where this z l is an element of this line intersected with the boundary, with a unit sphere in CK, the boundary of this 2K dimensional sphere. Okay, so let's see what, what this does. So we have, uh, yeah, we, we, we have the, our, let's try to make a picture. This is our CK, and then there is this C n minus K. And what matters in this uh, computation is this sphere here, the unit sphere in, uh, in CK. And we are interested here, so <coughs> we look at the components, so the Hamiltonian vector field will do something. What we are interested in is in the component, this component here. And then we evaluate, we have these, uh, these loops, which we, so we, we consider only, not all planes, but only planes which are actually complex lines. And we go around, uh, we go, uh, around them, and then we consider this loop, okay? So after, yeah, many weeks of computations, this <coughs> is what uh, one uh, gets, which I uh, find, uh, so the, the computations are long, but at least the final formula is uh, is decent, and, and what is nice is that, uh, of course, uh, the energy of a loop is always bigger, greater, or equal than its uh, area. It's basically, so there's this ener area energy inequality. It's basically well, isoperometric inequality in dimension two. And uh, so we have that the energy of a loop z is always greater or equal than the action with the quality holds if and only if z is uh, really something like uh, it's really a circle so it's z naught plus e to the theta j z1 okay so this formula means that uh, again if so of course, there are cases where this constant is zero. 
for instance, if this phi t is just the trivial, uh, uh, it's always the identity, there's no hope that just by a second order expansion we can get some information. But this constant is always uh, greater or equal than zero. And if the, if the Hamiltonian vector field is not so symmetric that all these, I mean, this function on all these lines uh, vanish, then there is this uh, uh, no squeezing. And so, <coughs> so an immediate corollary of this is that, so let, let's call this vector field Z. <coughs> so if, if it's not true that the equality, what is it? Z of e to the theta j z not equals, I think it's something like one half, well, no, 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 whatever. There is a condition on, um, you can, uh, by using this fact here, by using the fact that we know exactly when, uh, when the quality holds here, you can characterize precisely those Hamiltonian vector fields which will make this constant vanish. And these are the Hamiltonian vector fields for which I cannot conclude. So that's why I don't, but they are of course a, a very thin, uh, thin minority. It's a closed set with empty interior. And so again, this is a generic, you can also interpret this as a generic statement. And, um, and uh, so this, I think it's uh, good evidence to the fact that the, the statement should be true in general. And in the last time, maybe I would like to make some, ah, the corollary, I didn't write it, but maybe, maybe I can write the formula. So the corollary says that if this vector field here, Z is not, so symmetric that this function vanishes always, then there is uh, no squeezing. And the formula is uh, the formula is this, z to the e theta j x, but it doesn't tell much z of x plus z of minus x plus one half e to the theta j z x minus z of minus x. So if this is an equal, if this is equality, say for every x in uh, R two k, so we have this uh, thing here. If this statement here is false. then the volume, 2k dimensional volume of p phi t of the ball is strictly bigger than omega 2k for t positive and small. Okay, mm -hmm. one can write explicitly the form of the vector field, just that. Okay. Oh, sorry, the, the boundary of the, on the boundary of the ball of dimension 2k. Yeah, it's a condition only on the boundary. Thanks. Okay, and uh, let me conclude by making yeah, some general comments which will also lead to the, step to the proof of the other, of the other pro proposition. So again, here the proof is a, is a long computation and I don't know, one does not learn much from it. M maybe, you know, the thing which one could learn is how to do, how to compute the derivative not at t equals zero but at any t and so get the final result. But, uh, but uh, it's a bit hard. Question? Yes. Uh, no, not at all, but they say, that computation is, uh, took me, I don't know, one afternoon. And instead the whole one, uh, many weeks. No, it's, it's, it's not obvious, no. It's not obvious and it's of course, uh, because it also comes from the fact that you have to use that phi is symplectic. 
because otherwise it would not be true. It's not obvious, no. So um, let me make a, a general. So now we have these uh, we have this symplectic diffeo here, and we have this map. Let's call it psi, which is projection composed phi, okay, which goes from R to N to R to K, and we know. <coughs> so since the linear we said the linear no squeezing is true. So in the linear category, no squeezing, this middle dimension no squeezing holds. So this gives us an information. So this tells us so the, the linear no squeezing tells us that the, it tells us that the two k dimensional Jacobian of this map X, which is nothing else by, this is just the maximum over all spaces V in of dimension 2K in R2N of the determinant of the differential of psi at X restricted to V, this object here, is always greater or equal than one. Okay, so we know that there is some, uh, some uh, 2K dimensional plane somewhere where the composition expands, expands volume. And so, of course, the, linear, the perturbative uh, statement <coughs> would be trivial if it would be true that any map with this property also has a local non-squeezing property. But this, in general, is false. So this is a remark I should make. So if I have a map psi now from say from rm to rh and m is greater strictly greater than h which is strictly greater than one if we have this and i know that the h jacobian of psi is everywhere bigger than one this does not imply that the volume, the h-dimensional volume of the image of the ball of radius r is bigger or equal than omega h r to the h for r small. Okay? And uh, it would actually be true when h is 1, but in general, not. Uh, you can build ex 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 examples uh, yeah, this is a nice exercise for students to build an example, for instance, from R3 to R2 of a map with, uh, with this property. And why, why is this not true? This is not true because there is a, so it's a lack, uh, lack of integrability in some sense. So we could do the following. So we have, this, uh, we have this condition here. We know that the Jacobian, h-dimensional Jacobian is greater or equal than one. And so for every point we could consider, let's call it, I don't know, Wx. This is the, the set of spaces in the Grassmannian of dimension h in Rm, where, where the determinant of deep psi x restricted to v is greater or equal than 1. Okay? So by, by this fact here, uh, this is non-empty uh, for every x. And actually, an element here is uh, precisely, I take the, the differential of x, I take its adjoint, and I take right r h. The, the space here is always in, uh, in this set by, by this assumption. We're assuming this h Jacobian uh, greater or equal than 1, then at every s point I have, maybe if it's 1, I have just one uh, h-dimensional plane where volumes are expanded. If it's bigger than 1, I, have, I can also move it a bit. I have an, uh, a closed set with non-empty interior of, of spaces. 
So this object here is, could, could be called like it's a, like a multi-value distribution. At every point, I don't fix just one space, but many of them. And if this multi-value distribution, so let's call this a lemma, if this multi-value distribution is integrable, does it mean integrable in the obvious sense? If there is a, a smooth uh, foliation, which at every point is tangent to one of these uh, vector spaces. Okay, if it is integrable, then this st local statement would be true. The volume H psi of BR is greater or equal than omega H to R to the H for every R small. And the reason is just that, assume that this distribution is integrable. I take my ball, I take, so this foliation, which is tangent there, then what, what I have to show, and this is the, the thing which is, at least I don't have a, an elementary proof, what you have to show that if you have an h-dimensional foliation of a ball, you always find one leaf whose h volume is bigger uh, than the volume of the corresponding ball. And this you can do by, you look at the trace, you s replace your, your leaf by uh, the minimal object with the, same, uh, with the same boundary, and then you use monotonicity for, you choose the, among all those new minimal surfaces, you choose the one which passes through zero, and there you use the monotonicity, monotonicity formula. And so now, now you, you, one has this a leaf with large volume, and on these leaves uh, the, the map is volume expanding, and so also the image will have large volume, okay? And so the question is, uh, it could be, this also, I, an, another way of, of proving the, this local no squeezing would uh, be to show that in in the symplectic case, this distribution is always uh, integrable. And there is a, a bit of evidence for that, which is this. Well, some evidence is also that I tried many examples and it was always integrable. But <coughs> a, better, a better evidence is this simple <laughs> observation. Assume that we are in, a, in the rigid case. So assume that for every x in, in R to n, this distribution just consists of one, one space. So there we don't have any choice. So this is just D psi. So this is just say, one space. Let's call it D of x. So this means that we are, th this means that uh, um, this space here, which is precisely D phi x transposed of uh, r to k, this is our v of x, by what we said at the beginning about uh, when the equality holds in the linear statement, this means that this must be a complex, at every point this is complex. Then, in this case, v is trivially integrable. So in this case, D, or let's call it even V. So in this case, uh, this is a genuine, it's not a multi-value distribution, it's a genuine distribution. And in, th in this case, this, uh, this is integrable. And, uh, and uh, this because, uh, uh, well, this V of X is also, we said it's complex, so it's g of v of x. So it's j of d phi x t r to k. But phi is uh, symplectic, so this is uh, d phi x minus 1 of j r to k. But this is also complex. So this is d phi x minus 1 of r to k. 
And so this means that in this rigid case, these are just the counter images by phi of the foliation given by leaves which are parallel to R2K. And this is actually how you prove the first proposition because then you can consider the generic that you can consider among the set of all points you have points where you have just one sp space and then you have the complement where you have mo more the complement is open and there are the non squeezing holes just by continuity this set here if it has a non empty interior in the interior you use this argument and this lemma and also there are the non squeezing holes so the non the, the only ambiguous points are the points which are on the boundary of, uh, of this. Okay, and I will stop here. Thanks for the attention.